If you can make your own grain spawn, you can grow basically any kind of cultivatable mushroom that you want, and it doesn't actually have to be that complicated. In this video, I wanted to show you a method for how to make your own grain spawn at home without needing to take up a bunch of space or investing a bunch of money into building out your own mushroom lab. Now, you still will need to use some equipment like a pressure cooker or a pressure canner, but you won't need a laminar flow hood, which is typically the biggest barrier to entry for most new growers. So here is a fully colonized jar of pink oyster grain spawn and I made this grain spawn without the use of a laminar flow hood. In fact I inoculated this in open air without having to take too many special precautions. The trick to being able to do that has to do with this specially constructed lid that contains something called a self healing injection port. It's super easy to make and it makes the process of making your own grain spawn really easy. So the basic process for making your spawn is to take a cereal grain like rye or wheat berries, soak them overnight and then simmer them on a stove before filling them up into these jars with these specially constructed lids and then pressure sterilizing them for about 90 minutes at 15 psi. You can then inoculate them with a liquid culture syringe directly through this self-healing injection port wait a couple of weeks and before you know it you'll have some grain spawn that you can use for your next awesome mushroom project. So let's get started. The first step to making grain spawn is simply take some cereal grain. I like to use rye berries, but you can easily use another type of grain. Wheat berries work really good. Uh, you can even use brown rice, but I like to use rye berries just because they're so excellent for growing mushrooms. And then all you're gonna do is take your, uh, your cereal grain and soak it in a bucket for about 12 to 24 hours. So just cover the grain in water and allow it to sit there and soak. And what's gonna happen is the grain's gonna absorb all that moisture that the mycelium can eventually use to grow on. Now you don't wanna soak it for too much longer than 12 or 24 hours because eventually the grains will sprout and you want to uh, get your grains fully hydrated but you don't want them to sprout. Now. In previous videos, I showed you to add some coffee and some gypsum and some other stuff into this bucket as it's soaking. You really don't need to do that, especially if you're just growing on a small scale. It works perfectly fine just to add water and allow the grains to soak. Now again, remember as your grains are soaking, they're gonna absorb a lot of water. So the volume of hydrated grain is gonna be a lot more than the volume of dry grain. And typically that's about three times or maybe three and a half times. So for example, if you wanna make 10 of these quart jars of grain spawn, you wanna use about three to three and a third uh, quart jars of dry grain. So I'm just gonna measure out about three and a third or about three and a half quart jars of dry grain, put it into the bucket and let it soak. And that should give us about 10 jars of grain spawn when everything's fully hydrated. While your grain is soaking is the perfect opportunity to make your specialized lids. And these lids will allow you to inoculate your sterilized grain without having to open the jar, which is why you can do it without requiring a laminar flow hood. And they're pretty simple to make. All you do is you take a normal jar lid and you drill two holes. One hole is a bigger quarter inch hole and that's for pulling in your wad of pillow stuffing to create a filter that will allow your mycelium to breathe as it's growing through the uh, sterilized grain. The other hole is quite a bit smaller, about an eighth of an inch. And what you'll do with that one is you'll cover it in a small dab of high temperature silicone. So all you'll do is put a small dab of high temperature silicone on there and then leave it to set overnight. And this will create what is called a self healing injection port. And it basically allows you to inoculate your liquid culture directly directly through um, that dab of silicone without opening up your jar. So you just stick the needle in, you can inject your liquid culture and you can pull it out. And as you pull the needle out, it closes up that hole right away, AKA being self healing and doesn't allow any contaminants to enter. And that's why you can inoculate your jars in an open air environment without requiring a laminar flow hood. So they're super simple to make. All you need is your jar lids, some pillow stuffing, and of course the high temperature silicone. Now you don't want to use regular silicone sealant because that will melt when you put it in the pressure cooker. So the reason you need high temperature silicone is because obviously it's super resistant to high temperatures. So you can no problem put it in a pressure canner, sterilize your grain without worrying about the silicon melting back into your jar. Now that you have your jars ready to go and you have your grain that's been soaking for 12 to 24 hours, it's time to simmer the grain on the stove. And what this does is it just completes the process of allowing the grains to fully 
become hydrated and just kind of soak up all of that water and it also softens them a little bit to make it easier for the mycelium to grow on them. So basically all you're going to do is take your grain that you've been soaking, put it on the stove and simmer it for about 15 minutes or so. Now you don't want to bring it to a hard boil or boil it for too long because if that happens a lot of the times your grains will crack open and when you make your spawn it will be all kind of mushy and just won't be all that great. So um, just simmer it kind of at a low you know temperature so it's not a rolling boil but just a nice simmer and do that for about 15 minutes. Once you you've simmered it, you're going to want to drain the grains and make them dry on the outside, but obviously make them stay hydrated on the inside. And in the previous video, I showed you to kind of lay them out on a screen, which is still a great method. It works really well, but you, again, you don't need to do that. You don't need to build a screen and have all this fancy stuff. Really, all you need to do is once the grain simmered, just kind of dump it in your sink and make sure that you have the plug in there, of course, but dump it in the sink and just leave it there for an hour or so. And what that's going to do is it's going to drain off your grains perfectly and then after an hour you can just go ahead and fill your jars. Now this won't make absolutely perfect grain spawn every time but it will make a really really good grain spawn um, that's just as reasonable and especially if you're growing at home on a small scale it doesn't matter that much how you drain your grains because if you just dump them in the sink and allow them to dry they will be 99% of the way there and they'll be really good and it's just a way easier method. So again once you've soaked your grain simmer it on the stove for about 15 minutes and then just dump them in the sink to dry them off. So after about an hour or so, once your grains are reasonably dry on the outside, you can go ahead and fill your jars. Now you don't wanna fill the jars all the way to the top because sometimes while they're colonizing, you might wanna shake them. And if they're not all the way full, it makes them a lot easier to shake them and kind of speed up that colonization process. So I like to fill the jars between two thirds and three quarters of the way full, but simply just take a spoon and fill up your jars, close the lid, um, and then wrap a piece of tin foil on top. And that tin foil is just gonna make sure that you don't have water dripping back in through the polyfill as you're sterilizing your grain. So once your uh, jars are filled up, cover the lids in tin foil, and then it's time to sterilize them. So once the grain jars are filled, they need to be sterilized. And what this does is it kills off any kind of contaminants or mold spores or all the other stuff that's gonna be on the grain that will outcompete your mushrooms. And if you don't sterilize it, you really don't have much of a chance of having a success making a grain spawn. I know this is the point where a lot of new growers kind of get turned off because they think, oh, I need a pressure canner that gets expensive. Um, it seems too complicated, but really it's actually not that bad. This is a 23 quart Presto pressure canner, and this can sterilize up to 10 jars of grain, um, but it can also be used to sterilize fruiting blocks or agar and all sorts of stuff. So once you have one of these pressure cookers, it really opens up a whole world of possibilities in terms of growing mushrooms at home. And they're really not that expensive. This one can be had for about a hundred bucks. Of course, you can get um, you know more advanced ones like the All American autoclaves that are you know electric stereo claves or whatever. And those can be between 800 and a thousand dollars. They work amazingly. Um, and if you can get one, I highly recommend it. They're super sweet, but you really don't need one. This is just a stovetop pressure canner that can sterilize at 15 PSI quite easily, it can fit a lot of stuff and just goes on your stove. The only thing that's kind of annoying is it's really loud. So when it's on your stove, it's gonna be rocking and it's kind of annoying, but other than that, it's, it's great. They work great and they will last a long time if you take care of them. So you're just gonna load this thing up with your uh, grain jars, put it on the stove and sterilize it for 90 minutes at 15 PSI. So that's not 90 minutes once you put it on the stove, that's 90 minutes once it hits that 15 PSI. So put it on the stove, wait till it gets up to pressure, bring it back down to a low uh, temperature and allow it to sterilize for 90 minutes. After that's done, you just turn it off and you'll have perfectly sterilized grain to inoculate your mycelium into. So the final step is to inoculate the sterilized grain with a liquid uh, mushroom culture. So this is just a simple liquid culture syringe. There's lots of different places that you can get these online. Uh, I might put a link in the description from some that I recommend, but um, the one that I did for this particular batch of grain spawn was pink oyster mushroom. So uh, when you get these needles, they're already sterilized. So all you gotta do is take the needle out of the package, put it on there, and then inject about one to two cc's directly through that self-healing injection port. So here is the liquid culture syringe. And if you don't know what liquid culture is, it's basically just mycelium that's growing throughout a nutritious broth. Um, and it's a great way to inoculate uh, your grain spawn. So it'll come with a needle that's totally sterile already. So let's just go ahead and open that up. And then you need to remove this plug, which can be kind of a pain in the butt, but I got this nice little twist off tool. So all I'm gonna do is twist that off. Then we're gonna put that needle tip in there. 
And now we can go ahead and inoculate our jar. So again, this is totally sterile, but once I take this off, it will be exposed to you know the ambient air around me, but it should be totally fine. If you're doing lots of inoculations in a row, it might make sense to flame sterilize this. So just take a lighter and sterilize it until it's red hot. But really you don't even need to do that because um, again, you're just injecting the culture from the inside right into this grain jar and it should be totally fine. So let's go ahead and open that up. And then you can just inject it directly through. And then just inject about one cc of liquid culture into your jar. And you can see as I pull this needle out, it closes right up with that silicone. So no contaminants will find their way through there once you pull the needle out. So again, you only need about one cc per jar. So if you don't use the whole thing, you can just put the cap back on, put it in a Ziploc bag and just leave it even at room temperature on a shelf, but it'll probably last longer if you put it in the fridge. Uh, although this is pink oyster. So with pink oyster, I usually find the best results to just put them on a shelf somewhere out of uh, direct light and kind of in a cool area like your basement or something, or maybe even in the garage. And it should last you quite a while. And once that's done, all you gotta do is put your jars somewhere kind of out of the way and allow them to kind of do their thing. Of course, you wanna check on your jars every couple of days just to make sure that the mycelium is growing and that no contaminants have taken over. The most common contaminants would be like a bacteria. And you'd see that by, you know, kind of a wet look on the outside of the grains or trichoderma mold, which would be kind of a green mold that would be pretty obvious right away. The pink oyster grain that I made, it looks like it's contaminated because it's a little bit pink, but that's just what pink oyster mycelium looks like sometime. Actually, if you take a closer look, you can see there's even tiny little fruit bodies already showing up on there. Now, if you want to speed up the colonization process, once the jar is about one third or so colonized, you can shake it up real good and break up all those grains. And what that's going to do is just create more inoculation points throughout the grain jar and then start to colonize again. And it usually colonizes a lot faster. Now, you don't have to do that. It's should colonize pretty fast anyway in about like I said one to two weeks but shaking up that jar and increasing those colonization points will increase the speed just a little bit and if you're worried about contamination or if it's taking too long or something like that sometimes shaking the jar will help quite a bit. But if you've done everything and followed all the steps, there's a really low chance that you have any sort of contamination. If you do have contamination issues, it's usually because either your liquid culture syringe was contaminated or because you had an incomplete sterilization process when you were sterilizing your grains. But either way, you just take your inoculated uh, grain jars, you put them on a shelf, keep them out of the way, and in about one to two weeks, you should have perfectly colonized grain spawn that you can use to make fruiting blocks, to add to uh, aspen wood chips if you wanna do the bucket method, or to even make more grain spawn if you wanna do like a grain to grain transfer. Um, there's lots of different things that you can do with grain spawn, and, and once you have your own, you can you know use all different types of species and have a lot of really fun different mushroom projects. So I hope this was um, an easier way to make grain spawn. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Um, and yeah, as always, if you like mushroom content and you wanna see more of it, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. We like to do weekly videos, one to two videos every week, just kind of sharing the magic of mushrooms. So again, thanks so much for watching. I'm Tony from Fresh Cat Mushrooms and we'll see you in the next video.